Alright, so we're going to be doing part B of Griffith's Quantum Mechanics Problem 1.5 where we are going to find our expectation values. From part A, we found this normalized wave function by finding this constant uh, square root of lambda out in front. And now what we're going to do is we are going to find our expectation values of x and the expectation value of x squared. We're going to use the two following formulas here for the expectation value of x. We're going to integrate over all space of x times the magnitude squared of our wave function with t set equal to zero. And then for x squared, we're doing the same thing but now our x is just x squared. So let's begin by doing the expectation value for x, because this is one that's actually fairly straightforward. You can see that we plotted this function just like in part a plotting uh, what we're integrating is actually incredibly useful and what you can see here what you can see here is that on both ends we have something that is equal and opposite okay and so when we end up evaluating this integral we're going to end up getting uh, some something from minus infinity to zero plus something integrated from zero to infinity and since they're equal and opp opposite the sum of these will just equal zero the other way to notice this is that x here is an odd function. An odd function multiplied by some kind of exponential is still just an odd function. So you're integrating uh, an odd function over symmetric bounds, which is also just zero. If you uh, are good with any Fourier series or Fourier problems, you're going to be really quick to notice that. So the expectation value of x is just simply zero. Now moving on to the expectation value of x squared, we can see we no longer have something that's equal and opposite. Again, if you look at it in uh, the perspective of functions, we have an even function over symmetric bounds. So that is actually going to exist. And you can see that it's equal and opposite on both sides here. Or actually not equal and opposite. It's, it's equal on both sides here, just not opposite. And so what we can do, just like in part A, is we can either evaluate this um, from... Uh, negative infinity uh, to zero and then uh, add that to zero to infinity or we can just simply in take the in take one of these integrals let's say for this side from zero to infinity and multiply by two and that's going to give us our answer and so let's set up our integral here we're just going to take two times the integral on bound zero to infinity of x squared lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x uh, dx. So let's evaluate this integral now. We can evaluate this integral with integration by parts and we're gonna have to do integration by parts twice. So what we can do here if we just go aside we can set u equal to x squared, so du is 2x dx, then we can set dv equal to e to the minus 2 lambda x dx, so v is equal to minus 1 on 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x. Okay, and now we can just do integration by parts again. This time we'll set u equal to x, 
So du is dx, our dv term is e to the minus 2 lambda x dx, and then v is simply minus 1 on 2 lambda e to the minus 2 lambda x. All right, and then we can do that to evaluate this guy. And then we're going to end up getting the following. All right, now we just have this one last integral that we have to evaluate. This is a fairly straightforward integral, so let's evaluate that. And let's remember that all of this is being evaluated on the bounds 0 to infinity. All right, now again, remember this is all evaluated on bound zero to infinity. So now all we have to do is evaluate this. And it's pretty easy and straightforward to see that the only term we're going to end up getting is going to be this guy right here because our bounds are going to basically cancel everything else out. And so when we evaluate that this on uh, those given bounds, we're going to end up getting uh, zero minus a negative 1 on 2 lambda squared. And so this is just equal to 1 on 2 lambda squared for our expectation value of x squared.